Microsoft Ads keeps releasing more features to help advertisers increase their brand awareness. Today we're going to talk about Microsoft's new display ads. Now it's not really its own dedicated campaign type. It's actually an ad format that lives within a certain other campaign type. So in this video, we will show you how to set up a Microsoft Ads display campaign. We will show you the differences between a display ad versus a native ad within the audience network. And then we'll show you the ad specs that are required so you can get started. In the paid media world, it's very common for people to call the same thing by two different names. The most common one is probably PBC, SEM, paid media. A lot of people all mean the same thing, but they call it different things. Probably the most common one within Microsoft has been display ads and audience ads. That's because when Microsoft first introduced a more awareness image focused campaign, they were called audience ads and audience ads are still around. But when audience ads were first announced, the only ad format was native ads. Then within the audience network, Microsoft introduced video ads. We have another video about video ads. You can check that one out here. And then the most recent one just announced is of course, Microsoft's display ads. Now, when I walk through creating a display ad campaign, I'll show you the difference between native ads and display ads, but just understand you can create a dedicated display ad campaign, but it's also going to be part of audience ads because they've added all these formats into one. We can't just call the whole thing audience ads anymore. There are clear differences between each of them. And if you're looking to start prepping to test out display ads within Microsoft, it's probably good to know the specs that are needed. I have the source link on the bottom of the slide, but if you're running ads on the Microsoft advertising platform, these are the top ad sizes that Microsoft recommends. We have clients ask us, no matter if it's Google or Microsoft, well, we may not have time to create all the image sizes. Can you just give us the top ones? And luckily Microsoft actually does this for us. So here are the six top volume ad sizes that you should start with. If you're looking to create dedicated display ads, five of them are for PC and tablets. One is for mobile, but these aren't the only sizes. Here are the remaining ad sizes for PC, tablet, and mobile. It's the same source link on the bottom of the slide. Of course, the ideal scenario is to create a couple for each size so you can test them against each other, pretty much a set for each size. But we know time, budget, resource restraints, do whatever you can. With these ads, make sure it's a JPEG, ping, or GIF. However, GIF animations in this format are not supported. Ping transparency is not supported. And your file size needs to be one gigabyte or less. Now, besides the Microsoft advertising platform, display ads can appear on a few other places. Probably the next most common one is going to be Microsoft's owned and operated publishers like Outlook and MSN.com. Very common placements for the audience network, whether you're running native ads or you may be seeing them as part of their search partner network within your search campaigns. If you're looking to expand to Microsoft publishers, then you can use moving animated GIFs. Did I call them GIFs earlier? Whatever, same thing. Those you can have a 15 second loop. Publishers will also allow HTML5. And then supported ad dimensions are different, but then check out the link below. I just wanted to stick with the main display ad sizes. So now that you have the ad spec resource, let's go into Microsoft ads and start building a display ad campaign. We are in the new Microsoft advertising UI experience, but I do like that they still call out text within your menu. So you still understand what the heck each of the icons mean. Also, this is our demo account that we use to create these videos. So ignore this red bar up top. But for now, let's go ahead and create a new campaign. If you're looking to create display ads, as of right now, the only goal option is building brand awareness. And here we see the image that I showed on the slide earlier. You can switch between the different ad formats if you are choosing the brand awareness campaign objective. But of course we want display ads. So let's click continue. And right off the bat, Microsoft wants us to start creating the ads. So used to in pretty much almost every other campaign and any other channel, creating the ads is the final step before launching your campaign. So let's start adding images with Microsoft display ads. There are several ways that we could do this. If you've already run any image type of campaign within Microsoft and you already have images uploaded to your asset library, these are the images that are pulling in here. These are images we've used in other Microsoft ads videos. Some of these were for our original audience ad videos. This one right here was one that I borrowed for, I believe the flyer extension video. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a main image from an ad. This is just from an ad extension, but it exists within our asset library. You can provide a link paste in just ours. We really don't update the website a lot and our images are pretty basic, but there you go. If you want to find images from the website, you can pull it there. Microsoft also has stock images Let's type in something here. I just typed in advertising. No surprise that the stock images look very stock imagey. 
I already gave you right in the beginning of this video, the ad specs. So if you have your own, browse there, upload them, or just drag them within this rectangle here. Or maybe your eyes already looked at this purple bar up here using Microsoft AI to generate custom images. Let's see what I can do from a basic description. Let's see what this does. <laughs> well, well, it's close, kind of. Some funky spelling going on here. I mean, I do like coffee, so AI will get there eventually. This is just too good to show. You know what? What the hell? Let's just use one of these. I know, this is probably the most bland description I could feed it, but it's just too good. I have to use it. Here's the preview of one ad. Notice it's just the image. There's no additional text layer to it. Unlike the native ads, if I pop over here, the native ad component had you, of course, your URL, upload your image here, and then you could add a variety of headlines instead of descriptions. Microsoft calls it ad text, your business name. And if we look at the preview here, the native ads still have a strict template, but allows you to say more if you don't have the text within the image itself. So with the display ads, it's just the image. That's why it's probably gonna be very important to prep your images ahead of time. Make sure there's some catchy value message, perk, call to action, whatever, that is visible on your image ad. So if you choose the image that you want, notice there's a pencil button here. For whatever reason, I could crop it to make it fit the size that we want. Or if you only have one image and you need to use it for multiple ads in different sizes, you can go ahead and check the other size. And here's where cropping is gonna be important to maybe try to make it work within that frame. I'll go back to square, there it is. You can save and go to the next step. No, nope, of course, need a URL. Okay, now I'll go to the next step. Don't worry, you can always go back and create more ads later on. Next, choose your ad group name. I typically name my ad groups based upon the targeting that I have. Not gonna do that for this demo. First, you can edit your location targeting. Typically, I'm assuming you wanna choose specific locations. I'm gonna choose my country to make it easy. But understand display ads are available in over 50 markets. I don't have the exact list, but don't be discouraged thinking that's just introduced within the United States first. Check and see if it's available in your market. Then you can look at adjusting the default genders within Microsoft ads. There are age demographics, and then you can start choosing your audiences. In our account, we can look at targeting remarketing lists that you've created with your UET tag. Microsoft, as of now, still has similar audiences. They're in-market audiences which they do have different options than Google. So if you're not happy with all of Google's in-market audiences, check out Microsoft. They may have an option for you that Google doesn't. And then any customer match list that you've uploaded. So while the campaign objective or the campaign goal was brand awareness, it doesn't always have to be as high level as just your in-market audiences or similar audiences. You can re-engage with users here. That's pretty much all we have set up within our demo account. But if we go down, we can look at any ad group exclusions if you wanna add them. It's gonna be the same list options, and then potentially look at the ad schedule. We scroll down a little bit. This is another place where Microsoft differs than Google because the default option for Microsoft and ad scheduling is the ad viewers time zone. This is very helpful in the B2B side during business hours for a lot of our clients because they wanna have people at work potentially look at it to the end of their business hours. However, you do have the option to switch it to your accounts time zone for your ad scheduling. If it's a scenario where it will from a customer service standpoint, we won't be able to answer phone calls, respond quickly to emails if our business is closed for the day, but a business two, three time zone away still wants to try to reach us. So it's gonna be different depending on your account. Choose whatever works best for you. But we'll save and go to the next step. Choose your budget and bids. There we can name our campaign. Notice that it's not the first thing that we do. Whatever, I'm just gonna change it to this. Save and go to the next step. One last chance to review everything and then we can go live. I did not rename the campaign, so let me go right into it. Click into ad group. And if we need to, here's where we can go back and create way more ads, upload all the other images that you may need to make sure that we have enough in there to satisfy the ad sizes, as well come up with different variants for testing. And then as always, you can go to your column section, modifier columns, you can go ahead and choose other columns. Maybe there are several conversion options that you wanna add, other ones besides your basic impressions and clicks. Maybe you have custom columns created that you wanna have, go ahead and apply them. And then you can review performance at the campaign, ad group, or ad level to see what's working or not so you can optimize and improve results. One difference that we didn't show with this type of campaign compared to audience ads has been the targeting options. I've looked within other client accounts that I didn't wanna show you in this demo, and the audience targeting that we saw here matched all of our client accounts. So that means one of the things that you may have noticed that was missing from this type of campaign 
has been the LinkedIn targeting options. When we've used LinkedIn targeting options for Microsoft's native ads in the audience network, we've seen pretty good results in certain accounts because we can target specific companies, specific job functions, and additional features are gonna be coming to that soon. So the options with display ads aren't robust as the native ad format, but hopefully that'll change soon. We're probably gonna start testing these out in client accounts with remarketing first. And of course, we're gonna use a lot better ad images than what I just pulled for this demo. Because with display ads, we're fully controlling the message. Native ads, similar to like any other responsive ads, we're giving options. We don't know exactly how it may appear depending on how it's cropped. So if you still like to have as much control as possible, this may be a better option for you versus the native ads for the audience network. You won't know until you test it out. If you have any more questions on display ads in Microsoft advertising, please let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.